Hey everybody, this is Ryan King, and this is part two of my low poly astronaut animation. So in part one, we created the entire scene, and now this is part two, and we're gonna be animating it. So this is where we left off with the finished scene. I'm just going to go back into the layout right here, and I'm just gonna press escape right here, and this will jump back into the scene. And we're just gonna jump straight into animation. So I'll press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview. And I'm just gonna uh, pull up this timeline here so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna first start out by just setting up the scene how I want it to be at first. So I'll just make sure I'm on frame one. And I'm just gonna move over here and make sure you're on frame one. And I'm just gonna click on the flag, shift click on the pole, and then shift click on his arm. And I'll press control P and control P will parent objects. So I'm just gonna parent to the object. I'm gonna keep the transform. So now if I rotate this arm, the flag will move it with it because these objects are both parented to his arm. So if I rotate the arm, it'll move with it. And then also something that I wanna do is I wanna make it look like he's holding the flag more. So I'll tab into edit mode on this. I'll press Z to go into wireframe, one for vertices select. I'll just select his thumb right here and I need to turn off proportional editing, so just turn that off, and then I'll just rotate his thumb and make it look like he is uh, holding on to the flag. I'll also select this part of his fingers and just kind of rotate it just like that so it looks like he's grabbing onto it, and I need to give this some more room, just like that. So now it looks like he's grabbing the flag more. And I'm just gonna start out by rotating this down so that he kind of has, has the flag down like this, and I'm also gonna uh, rotate his head so I'm gonna double tap R and rotate his helmet down like this. So he's kind of looking down at the flag. And then I want his arms to be a little bit more relaxed. So I'll just kind of rotate it back a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna start with. So I'm gonna to need to add keyframes here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this auto keyframing feature. So I'll click like this and that'll turn it on. And what this will do is now any transform, so a rotation, a scale, or a movement, um, when I move them, it's automatically gonna add a keyframe. So I'll just press R and then click, and now you can see there's a keyframe right here. I'll also click on here on this arm and press R and then click just so that it adds another keyframe, and then I'll click on his helmet and press R and then click. So now you can see it's added a keyframe, that little uh, star thing right there, that is a keyframe. So now I'm just gonna move it a little bit because when he's first there, I don't really want him to do anything. So I'm just gonna move it to maybe frame 10 or something. And then I'll click on this, press R and then click, click on his helmet, press R and click, and then click on his other arm and press R and click. So now I'm gonna move to about frame 45 or so. And now I'm gonna make his arm come up. So I'm gonna click on his arm, rotate it up. So he's like pulling up the flag. I could also rotate it a bit like this and rotate it a bit up. So he's about to place the flag. So now it's added a keyframe right there. And then I'll click on his uh, head and I'll go to the camera view. I'll double tap R and make him looking up. So he's kind of looking at the flag, just like that. Just rotate it around how you want. And then also maybe I'll make his arm kind of come out a little bit. And then I'm gonna to go to about frame 60 or a little over and I'll have him place the flag. So I'll click on his arm, double tap R and just move his arm down and just kind of rotate it. So he places the flag in the ground, just like that. And then maybe just move his arm just a little bit just to give it some movement and I'll rotate his, his face that he's looking down. So now if we scroll through this and we play it, you can see he brings the flag up and then puts it down. And I think it's a little bit slow right now. So I'm gonna click on his arm, shift click on his other arm and then shift click on his head. And then I'll press A to deselect all these keyframes, B and I'll box select this keyframe and I'll press G and pull it over. So this way it'll be a little bit faster. So now if we play it, he'll just set it down. And I do need to fix this a little bit because it looks like he goes, he kind of moves it sideways. So I just want to go over here and just double tap R. Just select this arm and double tap R and just move it a little bit over. And now if we play that, you can see he brings his arm up and sets it down. And I do want to select these keyframes and maybe move them over a little bit so it's a little bit faster. And you can see now his head is a little bit off because he sets it down, then his head looks down. So I'll just click on his head click on these keyframes, press B and just box like these keyframes and just move it back to right when he sets this, the flag down. And then I'll press G and just move these keyframes over. So right when he sets the flag down, his head's down.
And then I do want to just make his arm kind of just moving a little bit, just so that he looks a little bit more lively. So I'm just going to make his arm just kind of moving around a little bit. I'll move over here kind of more towards the end, just kind of rotate his arm a little bit, maybe make it come back a little bit. And then I'll go to the very end and then I'll make his arm come forward a little bit. So his arm just kind of uh, just moves around a little bit. And then I'm going to click on his helmet right here. And after he places the flag, I want him to just kind of look around the scene. So I'm going to have him look up like this. Then I'm going to make this go a little bit forward, maybe to 183 or something. And just double tap R and just make him maybe looking up. Maybe he's kind of looking up into space. And I do want the animation to be about 200 frames long. So I'm setting the end here to 200. But you can set it to however long you want the animation to be. So now I'll just move it around. And you can see... I'll just play back the animation and he places the flag then he kind of looks around into space so I do want the animation to edit 200 instead of 250 so I'm just gonna click on this arm right here and then just uh, I can just click on the keyframes and just move them over so I'll just click on this keyframe move it right past 200 and now you can see his arm moves around maybe I'll just add another keyframe kind of like he moves his arm up just kind of like that before bringing it down all right, so he's basically animated. You can do whatever you want. You can make him hopping around in space or something, whatever you want to do, but I'm just doing some simple animation like that. And then I'm going to animate the camera because that'll give it a lot more depth. It'll make the scene feel more 3D and it'll also kind of give it kind of a low gravity feel. So I'm going to click on the camera and we still have this auto keying feature on, so that'll automatically add keyframes wherever we move something or rotate it or scale it. So I'm going to rotate this camera and move it over a bit. And so that'll just kind of give it more depth of the scene. So I'll just move it over like that. And then I'll move to the very end, just a little past 200 and I'll rotate this and just bring it over. And that'll kind of give it a cool kind of spacey feel. I might move it out a little bit too. Now, if we play this, you can see the camera slowly kind of moves, kind of like it's floating or something. Now, it starts to speed up, and then it kind of slows down at the end, and I don't want that. I want just to be consistent. So I'm just going to click and drag this out to make a new window. Right here, I'm going to change this to the graph editor. And then right here, we have the camera selected so we can see the actual keyframe. So this is the graph editor, and it's a tool that we use to do animation. I'm going to press T. And instead of uh, Bezier, because right now it's at Bezier, so it's a smooth transition. If I just pull this and close it, you can see here are the keyframes, and it's a smooth transition. I want to make it so that the camera just doesn't speed up and then slow down, so it just moves at a consistent rate. So I'll press T, and I'll change this to Linear. And now you can see the camera is just moving at a consistent rate. It doesn't speed up and then slow down. It's just moving uh, right across the scene. And there is one more thing that I want to do. I do want to make the flag waving, even though it, on the moon there isn't any atmosphere, so that couldn't really happen. I still want to make it waving just because this is kind of kind of a cool, like, low-poly cartoon scene. And I think it does add a lot to the scene. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to select everything except these two vertices. So all these vertices right here, I'll just box select them all. I'm going to click right here on this setting, and then right here you can see there's a vertex groups. I'm going to click plus to add a new vertex group, and I'm going to press assign, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. So I'm assigning all these vertices to a vertex group. Then I'm going to go over to the modifiers, and I'm going to add a new modifier, and I'm going to add the wave modifier. And so now if I play this, you can see it's giving it this wave effect. But the problem with this is that it's waving on, it's waving off the flag. But what we can do is we can click right here on this vertex group and click on the group that we made. And now it's only waving on those vertices that we assigned to it. So it's not waving off of the flag. And so now we can just change the speed and stuff. Right now I think it's going way too fast. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. And uh, we can change a lot of these things. So the speed, I'm going to make that smaller. So it's a lot slower. The width, you can also make like bigger if you want or smaller. And there's narrowness here. There's also height. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to make the height bigger. So that way it's blowing um, bigger. And you can just play around with these uh, values just to make it how you like. So for my settings, the speed is at 0 0.09. The width is at 0.15. The height is at one uh, is at 1.01 .01, and the narrowness is at 1.6. So you can punch those in if you want, or just play around with it and make it look how you like. So I'm just going to press F12 and just render this and see how long it takes to render. 
All right, so just finished rendering and compositing, and I can see right on the time right here, this took one minute and 22 seconds. So then that's gonna be about how long it's gonna take for your entire frames. So if you wanna see how long this animation is gonna to take to render, you can just take that number, so one minute and 22 seconds, and then times that by the amount of frames that you have. So, you know, if you want it to render faster, there are a few different things you can do. One thing that you can do is you could render this with Eevee. I like Cycles because it's more realistic, so I'm going to be using Cycles. But if you want to render it with Eevee, you could set this whole scene up with Eevee and render that, and it would definitely render faster. Another thing you can do is turn down the render samples, because I think we don't need quite that many samples, so I might just turn it down to like 50, and then I might render that and see how it works and the denoise node can still hopefully get away a lot of noise so you might be able to get away with just rendering it with like 50 samples another thing you can do is you can change the resolution down you, if you want to render it at just a 50 percent of 1080p you can just change this resolution to like 50 and then that'll be only half the resolution so that's another thing you can do to speed up render times i do want to render it at full uh 1080p so 1920 by 1080 so i'm just going to render it like this and having a GPU in your computer definitely helps too. So I do have a GPU, so I'm, I'm going to be using that. If you just have a CPU, then you'll just have to make do with that. So there are a few things you can do to try to speed up render times. Um, so I'm just going to now set up uh, the output for the animation. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna scroll down and you can see right here it says output. And you can see right now, uh, it's save. It's going to be saving it on my desktop. I don't want to do that. I want to save all the rendered images into a folder. So I'm just going to click right here on this little file. And then on my desktop, I've set up a folder called a render and I've just put it right in here. So you can see it says desktop render. So I've just made a folder and I'm just going to press accept. So now all of the images are going to be rendered into that folder. And we do need to render these out to images because if we render them out as a video, there are a lot of problems that could happen. The video could get kind of corrupted or have some glitches. Or also if your computer crashes or something, you'll have to re-render the whole thing. So this is what we do when we're rendering animations. We just render out the whole entire animation into to images and then we're going to be using Blender's video editor to add the animation together. So we're going to add all those images together and render it out as an animation. So right down here I'm going to make the file format PNG. You could also make it JPEG if you want to make less storage space but I'm just going to make it PNG and then you can just go render and render animation or control F12. So I'm not going to be rendering out the whole thing because I already rendered it out for the video for the tutorial at the starting. So you can see right here, here's the other render that I did, and I just saved them all to a folder on my desktop. And you can see here's all the images, so if I click on this, this is in my file browser, I can just uh, preview all the images. And I can just scroll through them, just click through them, and you can see here's the animation as images. So now let's open up a new Blender file, so I'm just going to open up Blender again. And then I'm going to go over here and click on video editing in a new Blender scene. So this isn't really a video editing tutorial, so if you want to learn video editing, there are lots of other tutorials out there. But I am just going to go over a few things. So one thing is that I don't really care for this, so I'm just going to close that. And then also on the playback, I'm going to turn on AV Sync, and I'm also going to turn on audio scrubbing. That's just some things that I like. And then I'll also show you my output settings for rendering it into a video. So now I'm going to add the frame. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm going to click on Image Sequence. And you're just going to need to go and find all the images in the folder that you created. And I'm just going to click on one and then press A and just double tap A to make sure that all the frames are selected. And then I'm going to click on add image strip. And then this will actually add it in as a video. So now if we play this, you can click play. I'm just using the space bar to play. And you can see here is our frames into a video. And if you want to add like sound effects or music or things like that, you can do that. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to show that because this isn't a video editing tutorial, but it's pretty easy. You can just drag and drop in a uh, sound and video on top. So our animation was 200 frames long, so I'm just going to set this end value over here to 200 frames. And now I'll just move myself back. <laughs> there we go. And so now you can see it's 200 frames long, so if we play, play through, it'll just uh, play through the animation just like that. And now I'm going to scroll down here and set the output. So the file format, I'm going to set to FFmpeg video, and that'll render it out as a video. Right here, I'm going to click right here, and this will set the output to where you want the video file to be. So I'm just going to save it on my desktop in a folder, and I'm just going to call it uh, maybe like final video render. 
something like that, and I'll click accept. And then over down here, I'm gonna click on the encoding, and I'm just gonna set this to MPEG-4 on the container. This is just the stuff that I'm doing. You can do whatever you want, but these are what I would suggest. And then on the video codec, I'm gonna set this to H.264. And then I'll just leave these at medium quality and good. And then on the audio, if you do have audio, you can uh, put it in. I'm uh, There's no audio right here, so you don't have to. But for audio, I would usually use ACC, or you can also use MP3. So I'm just gonna be using ACC for this video, and then uh, I can just minimize all those. And so now we've set up all of the render settings and we've set it up where we're gonna render it. So I'm just gonna save this file real quick by pressing Control S, and I'll just call this video edit and just save the Blender file just in case it crashes. Then I'm gonna go to render and click on render animation. And once that's rendered out, you can just go to your desktop or wherever you saved it and you can watch the final video. So this is it. This is the final video. So this is the finished tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Again, if you follow this tutorial and you post a render online, leave a link in the video description so that I can see your guys' artwork. I like seeing what you guys create. And I definitely encourage you guys to make this scene unique, maybe like change the spaceship, or maybe you could add another astronaut, maybe you could like add in an alien, or make like a Mars rover, or change up the animation or something. And I did just want to show you guys real quick that I do post my tutorials on the Blender Market and Gumroad. So if you want to help support me and also download the tutorial and get the finished Blender file and the final renders, uh, you guys can do that on my Gumroad and my Blender Market stores. The link will be in the video description and it would really help me out. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.